Tony Jones is the chief executive of Landlife Wildflowers, the charity that seeks to protect and encourage people to enjoy wildflowers and which established the National Wildflower Centre on Merseyside in 1999. I represent Landlife National Wildflower Centre, a charity established in Liverpool in 1975. We celebrate our 40th anniversary next year. Um, we have been delivering the rewilding agenda for almost 40 years, and I'm glad that George Monbiot has now finally caught on and has adopted our agenda. Um, we also uh, have delivered significant environmental improvements to a range of communities across the Northwest and the UK, and are now in discussion in countries such as the US and China uh, to help them look at their landscapes and indeed rewild their own landscapes. At the heart of everything we do is environmental justice. I, the um, organisation is based in Lowesley, one of the most deprived boroughs in the UK, with people suffering severe poverty and deprivation, low educational standards, and indeed, often low access to green space. So everything we do is about ensuring that we can bring good environments to these people. This is the type of environment they live in. On the surface, you might think a very green and pleasant place, but you can see that from that uh, photograph that the green... Uh, is a green desert, there's very little life, very little wildlife. It's the traditional landscape and around housing estates. Um, this is the only non-UK slide. Uh, this is from in the Far East, demonstrating the uh, green deserts that are being implemented, often using British skills and British architects uh, to say this is the way it should be. We want to tackle that, and these are some of the positive things we do through creative conservation. Bringing wildlife into these green deserts, bringing wildlife back into people's lives. We believe you can practice science on street corners. You can bring and engage people into wildlife through a number of routes. And we have started our careers in doing that. This is the street corner outside Liverpool Anglican Cathedral. Uh, if you haven't seen the Beatles, although they're a pastiche, here's the Beatles in Liverpool. You can't go away without seeing a representation of them. We bring in wildlife and people back together. We made links, these aren't, I know, but we made links with the Chinese community because they saw poppies on that street corner. Hence our links now with China, uh, and bringing other people involved. We take derelict land, we take waste land, and we turn it into beautiful spaces. And again, if you've been to Liverpool, haven't seen Liverpool F uh, City Football Club, then here you are. This is what we're doing in Liverpool and in Knowsley. This is a Knowsley um, street corner, ensuring it's part of everyone's lives, bringing wildlife back so it just becomes something they experience on a day-to-day -day basis without having to search for it, without having to go into, heaven forbid, a nature reserve where you're corralled and told what to do. We can bring them back into motorways as well. But we think bigger. We stripped the topsoil from this site. We sold the topsoil, and that paid for the scheme. This is a large scheme where we turned a derelict site into a maze of wildflowers. This now has a UNESCO MAB Man in the Biosphere Award as one of the most significant floral landscapes in an urban area. We're bringing new wildflower landscapes. We're ignoring and this is where we've challenged some of the traditional conservationists, for those of you who heard George Monbiot. We're ignoring the traditional landscapes. We're ignoring the traditional wildlife. We're letting, species, we're letting animals and plants do what they want themselves. We would say with a species mix that's found throughout the UK of common meadowland species and then let wildflowers and wildlife do what they want themselves. This started off with only 15 species. We can now count 85 in the period of less than a decade. And as you can see from the tower blocks, this is one of the most deprived boroughs in the UK, providing access to green space for people living there. And it reduces antisocial behaviour, it gets people outside more, it increases health, uh, it reduces health inequalities, it increases people's fitness and their engagement in community life. And this is, a, this is um, some of the schools we take round. Schools are using this as their natural playground, their natural learning environment. This year we'll be delivering a maths and nature educational project, trying to work out how we can stimulate young people in Nosley's borough to understand and perform better in maths. Nosley has one of the lowest maths attainments in the country at the moment. And it, as I said before, it becomes part of people's everyday lives. We set up the National Wildflower Centre on a disused uh, and derelict park in Nosley, um, a part of the old Gladstone estate. Uh, which has made news, I've noticed on Radio 4 this week, because they finally realised that Gladstone came from Merseyside. This was one of his boroughs, uh, this is one of his brother's estates. Falling into dereliction and decay, this is the old garden walled area. 
uh, and we got a Millennium Commission grant to build and create a national wildflower centre so that people could come along, learn about the techniques we use and be infused by wildflowers. This is the old garden wall that was part of the site and this is the building that follows that garden wall demonstrating uh, the conservation of a built environment. The garden wall has been retained on the rear of this building but also what we believe is the cut and thrust of modern architecture and the cut and thrust of modern creative conservation. And these are just a few shots around the site, showing people coming along to things like the Nosley Flower Show, one of the largest flower shows in the UK, one of the largest free flower shows in the UK, I should say. We've, de we've actually um, investigated and now delivered a major new technique that we call soil inversion. We use this huge Danish plough. Unfortunately, the um, uh, engineering sector of the UK can't produce such equipment. And indeed, most of our technical equipment has been sourced from outside the UK. But that aside, we turn over a metre of topsoil. We look at the arable lands that have been turned into agricultural deserts. And we're turning over the topsoil. We're burying carbon. We currently have a PhD project to see how much carbon we're burying. And it's only a PhD project over three years. But get some information about how long that carbon is buried. And there you can see the rich topsoil being buried under the poorer subsoil. It buries weed species. It means that wildflowers can um, have a better chance of taking off. Again, using the techniques we've developed earlier, we'll sow a mix of no more than 10 to 15 species and let nature take its course. And, of course, we involve the community. Even in some of the rural areas, there's a community dying to get back and get access to the countryside and to help to create that access by sowing wildflower seeds. I say we've worked with a Chinese community. So the red poppies on the corner that I showed you earlier attracted them because it, it's good luck in uh, China, as is, 88, as is the number eight. So we decided 88.8 grams of poppy would engage the Chinese community. Bizarrely, we worked, well not bizarrely, we worked very close with Eden and bizarrely they hadn't made links with their own local Chinese community. So we took our Chinese community down to Eden and helped them make links with their local Chinese community. It's about getting people engaged in wildlife wherever they are throughout the UK. We've actually developed, and it's now called a social enterprise. Back then it was a primary purpose trading company. We set up in 1984 a wildflower seed company, not the first, but one of the first, uh, and we sell wildflower seeds we have farms where we farm over 40 hectares of land where we grow the most common species. I say common, they've been wiped out on most agricultural fields. It's the corn cockle, the poppy, the white chamomile uh, as the cornfield land use. And this is some of the early days where we collect them by hand. We've now mechanitized, we've developed, I'll use that term. Uh, we're now using tractors, combine harvesters in all areas. But the, our two farms are in St. Helens, uh, again, a deprived area, a very urban community, but nevertheless with a significant rural hinterland. And we're cropping these seeds. That's ragged dropping earlier, and this is the poppy I mentioned, to create amazing scenes. These are scenes like people have never seen before. And then we dry them. This is a scale of operation that we're working to. We dry these seeds. These, I say, are the many of the machines we're using on our site at the National Wildflower Centre to then sort and sift and get them to a high-grade quality uh, seed. Q have just awarded us a major contract, uh, and if you go online and look up Grow Wild, they'll be sending community uh, packs of seeds to community groups throughout the country. And we have won that contract both on the quality of our seed and the rigour that we put behind in ensuring it's purely UK-based and, UK and sourced and grown in the UK. And we have, by coincidence, just launched our latest catalogue, 2014 to 16. There's copies downstairs. Please buy your wildflower seed from us. The profits uh, go to supporting our charitable work. And this is just as a range of some of the packets we produce. And not just packets, kilos, tons of seed to go and restore wildlife and wild countryside across the UK. I thought we'd end up on this. I said earlier that we were... Um, ignoring to a certain extent and often becoming under quite attack from other conservationists the traditional vegetation classifications but even some of the top ecologists in the country are now recognizing that we need to think about new assemblages of species and actually look at reviving our countryside in new ways and i think this is appropriate this applies to us this applies to the green party we're a small group of thoughtful committed citizens who can change the world indeed it's the only thing that ever has and that's the conclusion thank you very much